This video provides an overview of assets in Maya 2011. Assets provide the ability to segment your scenes into an organized fashion. They also allow for breaking down large scenes into easier to work with pieces. For Maya 2011, it should be pointed out that the term container is now gone and has been replaced with the term asset throughout the interface. So in this first example, we have a very simple proxy gun acting as a stand-in until the final prop is ready. In early design stages, we know that this gun needs to have a couple of basic motion requirements, so a basic loading and trigger motion. These are set up with set-driven keys, and these basic requirements can then be set up as an asset that artists can go ahead and fully animate and use before the final prop is even ready. If we look inside the asset, we can see that a template has been created, and this can be used up the chain for the final prop as well as different versions of similar weapons. So here we have the finished uh, gun prop. It offers the same basic functionality as a stand-in proxy with some minor vi uh, variations to it. However, we still have the entire hierarchy exposed along with several other nodes and, and other objects here that the artists don't need to basically uh, see or worry about. So the same controls exist. Basic set driven keys controlling the load and trigger functions. I can go ahead and I can package this prop up into an asset and then begin to publish up the attributes um, that the animators only need to see. So the publish commands are available via this edit menu here or now within the assets menu itself. You can still see the entire hierarchy listed under the asset. At this point anyone still has full access to all associated nodes within the original prop. These may be things that we don't need an artist to worry about so we can quickly lock them out using the black box command and this, as you can see, collapses a hierarchy into one simple node. We can also add a simple icon here. Maya now accepts a variety of image formats for icons throughout the interface and will also scale the icon as needed. We have our simplified asset with access to only the required attributes. Now the quicker and simpler way to achieve the exact same setup as our proxy gun asset is by using the base template I created earlier. So we can actually apply this template, let's go ahead and do that. And that would save us from going ahead and manually publishing up these attributes. As long as the name, the attribute names match up, Maya will bind that um, and actually match them up. So this is a huge time saver. You can reuse this template across the, uh, the production line for um, uh, similar or slightly different props. So we can actually apply this to, and, be, and reuse it for um, other props as well. So here we have a shotgun prop. And although, although it's a similar weapon, it does operate slightly differently, but as long as the attribute names, once again, line up, Maya will bind them via the template. So you can see we have a basic load functionality here once again, and a slightly different trigger motion, but the attributes are the same. So let's take a look at the, what the template's actually doing here. Uh, the templates are stored as XML files, and they also offer the opportunity to manually create other commands within there as well. So you can see within the template here, here's where Maya is binding these attributes here and lining them up so that you can reuse this template over and over. And as long as you match these attribute names up, you're good to go. So you can see these little labels we have up here. Let's just pop over into the asset editor. And it, within here, I'm just going to pin my shotgun asset there. And you can see that we have our two basic attributes here for this example. We have the load and trigger. And if I hover over top of them with the arrow, the, the cursor here, you can see that I get a little pop-up bubble. Well, back in the uh, my little uh, editor here, I could change these labels to add any kind of customized notes I want. So we could create uh, essentially help bubbles for artists if they need to know what that attribute actually does. So the last thing we want to look at is another new feature here within uh, assets here right underneath the asset attributes here is this right mouse button command so here's a handy little feature here it accepts Mel or Python scripts and you can essentially plug in um, your own custom right mouse button command so if I go into the over the shotgun here right mouse button command uh, right mouse button click you can see that I have down at the bottom here this little customized shotgun uh, pullout menu and I could put in whatever I needed to, uh, to be here and have a quick access to that at any time um, over top of the asset by right mouse button, uh, right by clicking the right mouse button. So we're just going to switch over here to a level. This level's from the wet game, courtesy of A2M. Uh, the weapons are as well, of course. So new in Maya 2011 is the create assets with transforms feature, where you can now move, position, and place assets in a scene. 
So another approach to do this is to use the export proxy asset feature. Um, and what this does is it allows you to, for the, uh, to create a simple locator that can be used as a placeholder within a scene that can later be swapped out for the finished prop or for iterations as work progresses. So in this scene here we have a simple proxy statue here. We just have this simple little object and I can go ahead and move it around. Just use it as a placeholder for the final prop. And uh, the way this could work is that while the final prop is being created, an artist can quickly output a simple proxy asset using the new export proxy asset feature found in the menu. And all it does is it simply puts a, uh, a, a simple locator out that has the ability to uh, have full access to transforms. And in this case, what I've done is just gone ahead and added my proxy prop here, in this case, a simple little proxy stand-in statue to that uh, exported proxy asset locator by using the new add to assets menu feature. So you can see this has a little customized box here. I can go in and I can specify what specific uh, conditions I want uh, to add to an existing asset. So after being positioned and animated, uh, whatever it may be, this basic prop can simply be swapped out um, via the referenced editor for the finished prop. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'm just replacing this reference here. Um, when you're exporting a proxy asset, you can actually use the main assets template if one exists or is assigned at the time. And the nice thing about that is it'll put out that simple little uh, placeholder locator. Um, as well, it will actually produce in, in a custom template for that placeholder attributes that will be published to that proxy asset. So we can see the final prop in place here and that it has preserved all of the transformations carried over from the proxy version. So of course any animation on any of these channels would carry over as well. So we're just going to move over here to the Ruby character once again from A2M's wet game. Another very cool new feature in Maya 2011 is the ability to create and use offline edits. So what you can do is actually just go ahead and uh, make var variations or even minor changes, even large changes to a scene. Um, such as geometry changes or new connections and nodes connected via those connections um, to, and you can write them out to an external file. You can then apply the edits files to, to other objects to invoke the same changes on them. So what you can do is create a library essentially of these changes. So uh, underneath the file menu you see we have the ability to work with um, uh, offline edit files here. So in this example we have our base Ruby rig and I can apply edits in a variety of forms. Uh, anything from animation changes to skin and rig adjustments. So what I'm going to do is go ahead in the reference editor here and I'm just going to go ahead and assign some offline edits um, to this referenced in Ruby character here. So I have my Ruby character with no animation on it and using these offline edits I'm just going to apply uh, this animation here. We're just going to put this kind of slash animation on her here. So with assets, this is a great way to break scenes down into smaller pieces to be able to have a library of little edits to work with um, uh, in production here. So you can see we have this nice little slash animation going on here. Of course, it'd be nice to add a sword. So let's just jump in the reference editor. The sword exists right now as a proxy asset that was using the export proxy asset. So it's a simple locator attached to the weapon bone within her hand. And this allows me to uh, swap it out with the actual sword. So let's do that. So you can see here we have our actual sword here um, with the animation. And now let's start to add some secondary motion here. So it would be nice to have her hair moving around. Well, we could have animated that in another scene and just thrown out an offline edit file. And let's just go and grab that and add it to the, the file here. So now you can see uh, that we're, we're working this very kind of modular approach here. So there we have some secondary animation on her hair. So. It's important to note the way this works here. So with offline edits, um, you can see that we have these two choices in saving them out. So it, it does produce a .edit MA file, or you can save it in binary. And where they're going here, I'm just going to go and, and, and jump into a project here. And new project, we'll, we'll go down use the defaults here. You can see in the scenes directory, there's a subdirectory created that's called edits. And this is where it will stick those in there for you. So you can build up that little library of offline edits. So let's continue back here. 
Uh, just like I did with her hair on top of the same asset, we put in some animation on her body there with the slash motion. We've added a sword. We've added some secondary motion to her hair. And this is all just these offline edits. We're just kind of modular, just kind of lo loading in here. Let's do the same thing with the sword. We're going to put some tassel animation on there. So I'm going to assign an offline edit to that sword asset there. And we'll just apply this. And you can see that we get some some motion now, some secondary animation on the tassels here uh, within the scene. So we could keep going ahead with this and we could keep adding in different animations, different movements here. If we see a skin or rig adjustment that might need to be done for a specific scene or throughout the pipeline, we could do that and write them out or save them off. So using offline edits in conjunction with assets provides a really nice modular approach to scene management. So that's an overview of a few of the improvements made to assets in Maya 2011.